Hi guys, I'm busy doing some last minute prep for this video because it's going to be a quick fire questions video on electricity which I thought would be quite a good option because I know quite a few people struggle with this particular topic. So as with all my quick fire videos, I'm going to ask the question, pause, you guys scribble down your answer, think about what you think the answer should be and then I'm going to tell you what I think is the perfect answer. So because it's electricity, let's start by looking at some electrical components that you find inside a circuit. So I'm just going to list some circuit symbols and you're just going to write them down. So start with the bulb, now an open switch, a closed switch, a cell, a battery, and remember a battery is basically two or more cells put together. Next up I want a resistor, and let's go along all the resistor in, resistors in the resistor family. So I want a variable resistor, a thermistor, and a light dependent resistor. Next up, a weird one, which is a diode. And at this point, I'm going to ask you, what is special about a diode? And a diode is a device which only allows current to flow in one direction only. I want you to draw me a fuse. And is there anything else I want you to draw me? Oh, I always do this, I can never think. Maybe an ammeter? And also a voltmeter. And if I've forgotten any of them, I apologise, I'm sorry, it's really hard to think about it off the top of my head. So next up, I'm going to ask you, how do you insert an ammeter into a circuit and what does it measure? Now, a measure, <laughs> now an ammeter measures current and current is measured in amps. And if you're inserting an ammeter into an electrical circuit, you need to insert it in series. And that means it needs to be part of the main circuit. What is a voltmeter? What does it measure? And how do you insert that into a circuit? Now a voltmeter measures potential difference or the amount of voltage passing through. And because it's measuring potential difference, it's looking at the voltage before and after an electrical component, which is why you need to add a voltmeter in parallel. And I'll add a diagram to show you what I'm talking about. So it needs to be in parallel to the rest of the circuit as it's only measuring the voltage of a specific component or device. And what they often do in these exam questions is ask you what is wrong with the circuit that they've provided you with and quite often the ammeter and the voltmeter will be in the wrong place so do try and get that sorted in your mind or they'll have the um, positive and negative terminals on the cells facing towards each other or away from each other and it's all a bit wrong. Just remember it needs to go positive, negative, positive, negative and look out for those issues when they ask you it. Going back to units then, what is the unit of charge? and that is coulombs. What is the unit of power? And that is watts. What is the equation linking voltage, current and resistance? Some people won't need to know this because you'll be provided with a formula sheet, other people it will be really important that you've learned all your formula, but voltage is given by current times resistance. And now I've mentioned resistance, what is the unit for measuring resistance? and that is the ohm. Let's look more closely at the difference between a series and a parallel circuit. So I think what I might get you to do is have a go at drawing out the following circuit. So I'm looking for a circuit that contains two cells pushed together to form a battery, one resistor and two light bulbs, and that's a series circuit. So have a go at drawing that out and see if it matches the one I've drawn here. Now let's look at circuit rules. How does the current compare in a series circuit? What is the current like? Now remember, the current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. However, how does the voltage compare? Now remember that the total voltage coming out of the battery is the sum of all the individual voltages of all the other components. So you need to add up the individual voltages to get that total voltage that comes out of a cell. And actually talking about this, I'm just going to quickly teach you, this is why if you keep adding more and more bulbs to a series circuit, you'll see them get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and that's because they have to share out their voltage, um, so they'll get, as you see, they'll get dimmer and dimmer, but the battery of the cell won't actually run out any quicker. However, if you compare it to a parallel circuit, what you see here is that the bulbs stay super bright, and the reason is, is because the voltage is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit and it's the individual currents that add up to the current coming out of the battery. 
check out my video on electricity if this is sounding really confusing. What is the resistance rule for a series circuit? And just like the voltage in series circuit, what happens is you see that the total resistance is the sum of all the individual resistances of all the individual components. So effectively, total resistance equals resistance 1 plus resistance 2 plus resistance 3. What are the resistance rules for a parallel circuit? This is a different equation you're going to have to learn, which is 1 over R total equals 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2 plus 1 over resistance 3, as in how many resistances that you've been given. Why does the resistance in a metal filament increase when the temperature increases? And that's because this increase in temperature causes the metal ions, the positive ions inside that metal filament to vibrate more. And what they do is they slow the flow of the electrons, they stop them flowing through as easily. Hence you see the resistance increases. What is Ohm's law? Ohm's law states the fact that as the current increases across a resistor at constant temperature, you will see that the voltage will also increase. That's a bit strange. Try not to get too panicked. Just remember that if you see a current voltage graph, you're going to see that it's a straight line, meaning that it's directly proportional. Things like diodes have a very distinctive curve. Um, they go along and then they go up, and that's showing that the current only flows in one direction. And then a filament light bulb is slightly different again. You'll see a very distinctive S shape, a sigmoidal shape, and that's because the filament bulb does not obey Ohm's law. Now, although I've just said a resistor obeys Ohm's law because as the current increases, the voltage also increases, you see some slightly different behaviours from other resistors, such as the light-dependent resistor and the thermistor. So my question to you is, how does a thermistor's resistance alter when the temperature increases? And remember that a thermistor's resistance decreases when the temperature increases. What is an everyday use or household use of a thermistor? And you could say that thermistors are used in thermostats in terms of controlling the temperature of your house. How does increasing light levels affect the resistance of a light dependent resistor? And you'll see as the light levels increase, the resistance decreases. Where can you see this in everyday life? Things like um, street lighting outside, you'll find light dependent resistors. What is the definition of a direct current? A direct current is one in which the current flows in one direction only. Do try to use those exact words to make sure you get two marks. What is an alternating current? An alternating current is where the current changes direction continuously. What is the mains voltage supply? Well, that's 230 volts. What is the role of the fuse? Now remember the fuse is a safety device which has a wire passing through it and what happens is that wire melts when the current is too high, breaking the circuit, so definitely it prevents fire and things like that. Let's look more closely at the plug. So what colour is the earth wire? Remember that that is yellow and green and my teacher taught me because she was like, it's like grass and the sun, so it's like planet earth. Don't know if that helps you but that's how I've always remembered it. What is the colour of the colour of the live wire? That's really weird, it's brown, so it's the really sludgy brown colour, really unusual, you wouldn't expect it to be the live wire, but it is. And then lastly, what is the colour of the neutral wire? And the neutral wire is blue. Why are the pins in a plug made out of brass? Because brass is a good conductor, it's cheap and it's hard. Why is the plug socket made out of plastic? Why is the plug outer casing made of plastic? Why is, the, why is the cable grip made out of plastic? Why is the wire coated in plastic? All the same question, and the answer is because plastic is an electrical insulator. How does a circuit breaker work? So just say that it breaks the circuit if the current is too high. My next question is only applicable to people studying certain exam boards, and it is how does a residual circuit breaker work? And a residual circuit breaker works by comparing the current in the live wire with the neutral wire, and if these currents are different, then it will break the circuit. Now I think I'm going to switch to the iPad and show you some maths questions so you can actually look at some electrical calculations. Rather than painfully typing up the questions, I thought I'd just find some past paper questions actually on electricity because that's probably more useful. So starting with question 2a. The diagram shows the circuit used to obtain the data needed to plot the current potential difference graph for a filament bulb. So we've got um, a battery, we've got a variable resistor at J, a bulb, and an ammeter with the voltmeter in parallel around the bulb. 
why is the component label J included in the circuit? So make sure you read that question properly, don't go naming it. It wants to know why it's there. And it's so you can obtain a range of voltages, or you could say to alter the resistance of the circuit by increasing or decreasing it. The resistance of the bulb increases as the potential difference across the bulb increases. Why? And that's because the temperature of the bulb has increased. 2A part 3. The bulb is at full brightness when the potential difference across the bulb is 12 volts. The current through the bulb is then 3 amps. Calculate the power of the bulb when it is at full brightness and give the unit. So do make sure you give the unit here. And I'm going to, um, for the people who don't get given the equations, I'm going to work out what the equation is that I need over here. So we're looking, this is PIV. So we're looking for power, which is current times voltage. So I like writing the equation. And then the current is 3 amps times the voltage, which is 12 volts, which gives 36. And remember, the unit of power is watts. 7. A student investigates how the resistance of a thermistor varies with temperature. Draw the circuit symbol for a thermistor. So that's the one which looks like a hockey stick. So you want to do a resistor and then like a hockey stick going through it. So it looks like that. Try and draw a bit straighter than that. B. The student uses voltmeter and ammeter readings to find the resistance at each temperature. One set of the readings is shown below. State the equation linking voltage, current and resistance. So out of the way over here I'm going to put my formula triangle and therefore voltage is given by current times resistance. Part 2. Show that the resistance of the thermistor at 80 degrees Celsius is about 5000 ohms. So we're using this equation which is resistance equals voltage divided by current. The voltage we were told in the question was 13.2. Now it's really important that you're careful with units because we were given the current in milliamps and we needed to convert it to amps. So you need to divide zero, you need to divide 2.6 by a thousand to get 0 0.0026, and then what that will come out with is a number which is approximately 5,000 ohms. Um, so do make sure that you've got your um, units converted correctly and at the end of the day even if you're not sure the good thing is they want you to show that the answer is about 5,000 so if you're not getting an answer of 5,000 you know you've done something wrong so just keep jiggling the numbers don't just leave that question out. 9. The diagram shows some lamps connected together. There are 20 small lamps connected in series with a 9 volt supply. What is the voltage across each lamp in a series circuit? So you've got to remember your circuit rules here. So remember in a series circuit that the voltage is shared between all the devices. So there are 20 lamps, so you need to do 9 divided by 20 and you'll get an answer which is 0 0.45 volts. Each lamp has a power of 1.5 watts. State the equation linking power, current and voltage. So again, out over here it's PIV. So therefore power is current times voltage. And lots of people have asked me before why I put I as the um, symbol. It is I. In, you have to put that. If you put C, they'll mark it wrong. And that's actually due to a historical reason that I stood for the intensity of the current. So that's why it's I. Anyway, show that the current in the circuit is about 3 amps. So we need to use this variation of the formula, which is current equals power divided by voltage. Now we've been told that the power is 1.5 watts. However, there are 20 lamps, so you need to times that by 20 and then divide it by the total voltage, which was 9, and it will give you an answer, which is 3.3 recurring amps, which is obviously approximately 3 amps. I really hope you found this video helpful. It's quite hard to film, and I'm thinking it might not actually have been that helpful, but I'll probably upload it anyway, just on the off chance it helps at least one person. Please sub to my channel if you haven't already, and like this video if you want similar ones, and hopefully they'll be a bit better next time. Take care, guys. Bye.